Hi guys, this is Miss Raymond, and now we're going to talk about naming covalent or molecular compounds. Now we're not going to talk about ones like methane, propane, or even methanol, propanol. We're just going to talk about regular non-metal, non-metal compounds. So these covalent compounds, also known as molecular compounds, we have to know that it is all about the prefixes. Now these prefixes are so important that you can see that I put arrows around them. In covalent compounds only. That's the only place that we're ever going to see these prefixes. Now these prefixes are going to indicate the number of each type of element. And what we're also going to do is we're going to change the second element ending to I, D, E when we're all done. You can see that I listed the prefixes here. 1, mono, 2, di, 3, tri, 4, tetra, 5, penta, 6, hexa, 7 hepta, 8 octa, and 9 nana. Now, we're not going to use probably the last three, 7 through 9. We're probably not going to use those very often, but we still want to be able to recognize what each of those prefixes are. So make sure that you have those in your notes. The very first one I went ahead and did for you. So the very first one, we have carbon first. So we're going to name carbon, and notice how I left out the mono. Now, mono can be left out only if it's the first element. If it's the second element and it's mono, meaning one, then we have to include it. So here you can see that I included the mono for the monoxide. Instead of just calling it carbon oxide, which could really fool someone, I'm calling it carbon monoxide to let them know that, oh yeah, there's one carbon and there's also one oxygen. Notice that we are not going to look at the charges. There's no charges that are involved with non-metal, non-metal because there's no giving and taking of electrons. It's only about a sharing of electrons. And therefore, we're going to use prefixes to indicate how many are coming together in order to share those electrons. The other thing I want to point out about the monoxide is notice that we did not say here monooxide. Because again, that looks funny, that sounds funny. So instead, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just say monoxide. We're going to only have the one O in there. Now, have you ever thought about, hey, I've heard of carbon monoxide, I've heard of carbon dioxide, what are the differences between them? Well now you're going to see that today. Again here I have C and there's only one C so I could call it monocarbon but we can leave that mono out just like we did before and we can just call that carbon because it's the first element we can leave out the mono. The second element there are two oxygens. So remember that two the prefix is di so we're going to call this carbon dioxide. So now you can see what the difference is between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Now, looking back at those prefixes that you wrote down earlier, go ahead and try the rest. Remember to name the first element using the prefix unless it's mono, name the second element using the prefix, and change the ending to I, D, E. Just pause now and try them. So how did you do? Did you get them right? Hopefully you saw that here we have three nitrogen, so that's tri-nitrogen, and we have seven oxygen. So again, instead of saying hepta oxide, we just kind of go ahead and we erase that A and we call that heptoxide. Okay, so it's just called heptoxide instead. Dinitrogen, pentoxide, again, that instead of pentaoxide, it becomes pentoxide. And our last one, because the mono is the first element, I don't need to include it, but it's okay if you do include it. That would be fine. Hopefully you did well here. If you're still having some troubles, go ahead and try some from the book, try some from our worksheets, and let me know if you need some extra help.